we are going to play a game. I'm going to tell you some things we talked about in last week's lesson. If it was a good thing for Joseph, give me thumbs up. If it was a bad thing for Joseph, give me thumbs down. Are you ready? Jacob loved his son Joseph. Joseph's brothers hated him. Joseph's brothers wanted to kill him. Joseph trusted that God would take care of him. Good job. Today, we'll see how great God is and how he can help you to say no to temptation, just like he did with Joseph. Because our God is greater. This story can be found in Genesis 39. I had been taken to the land of Egypt and sold as a slave to a military captain named Potiphar. I was put to work in the fields, working long hours in the hot sun. I did whatever I was told to do. God had given me the strength. He had given me the ability to do every job well. The Lord, he was with me. He caused me to succeed in everything that I did. My good work and attention to detail pleased my master so much that he put me in charge of his whole household and property. Since I had many responsibilities in the house, Potiphar's wife, she began to notice me. She wanted me to be with her, to have me as her own. But she was already married to Potiphar. She desperately wanted to get me alone with her. One day she came to me and told me how she felt about me. What she was doing was sinful. She wanted her own way. She was willing to do whatever it took to get what she wanted. When you and I want our own way, that is sin. We are born wanting to sin. Sin is breaking God's laws in things we think, say, and do. For example, when we hate each other, that is sin. You know, no one is perfect like God. God is holy. That means that he is without sin. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah 17, 9, that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? God says that the punishment for sin is separation from him forever in a terrible place. But the one true God who created heavens and the earth loves you. The Bible says that God is love. He created you to know him. He knew you couldn't get rid of your sin by yourself. So he sent his son to the earth for you. Jesus, God the Son, lived a sinless life. Then he was willing to die a terrible death on the cross. He bled and died so your sin can be taken away. And God accepted Jesus' death as a payment for your sin. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 5, it says, For I delivered to you, as of the first importance, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Jesus was buried in the tomb, but on the third day he rose from the dead. He was seen by hundreds of people, then he returned to heaven. You can believe in Jesus today as your Lord and Savior. God will change your life and give you new desires to please Him. I couldn't do anything against Him or my Master. God gave me the strength to say no to this temptation. Potiphar's wife, she continued to tempt me, but each time I refused to listen to her. God, He was with me. He was giving me the strength. One day, I was working in the house and no one else was around, Potiphar's wife took hold of my coat and begged me to be with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
God, he helped Joseph to say no to temptation. He gave him the strength to run away from it. You see, temptation is the strong desire to do something wrong. Every day there are things that can tempt you to sin. You can look at things that you're not supposed to look at. Maybe on the computer or on the phone. You might even be tempted to steal or hurt somebody. You could be tempted to be rude to your parents or your friends. To be tempted, it's not a sin, but to give into it is. See, once you sin in your thoughts, you'll soon want to sin in your actions. God, He wants you to keep your thoughts clean and pure. God tells us in His words in Psalms 119 verse 9, How can a young man, a young person, keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. See, will you stay say no to temptation? God can give you the power to live a life pleasing to, to the Lord through the Holy Spirit He has given you. I cared way more about pleasing God than pleasing Potiphar's wife. She was standing there with my coat in her hands. She was so angry that she didn't get what she wanted. So she screamed out, telling the other servants that I tried to attack her. When Potiphar got home, she told him this lie and showed him my coat. It was another sad day. Potiphar, he had me thrown in prison. If this had happened to you, I would be so angry and sad. But you know what? God was with Joseph even in prison. God is with you too. If you have trusted in Jesus as your Savior, God is always with you. He tells us in his word, the Bible, that I will never leave you or forsake you. So you can follow these four very important steps, right? One, read God's Word every day. Number two, avoid those temptations. And number three, say no. And number four, sometimes you just need to remember to run away. Will you remember that this week? That God is greater. He's greater than all these temptations that we face. The greatest thing God ever did was when He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to save you from your sin. Jesus Christ, God the Son, gave his life on the cross to save you. The Bible tells us in Acts 16, 31, believe in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved. To believe means that you completely trust that Jesus died for you and came back to life to save you. I pray that if you have not believed in Jesus as your savior, you will do that today, right now. Just talk to God. Tell him that you're sorry for your sin and that you believe in Jesus. Will you do that right now? And we look forward to next week when we get to see how God continues to work in Joseph's life. God bless you. Notice we're always praying for you. Come be 